I think I've already passed to you the three specific score, the journals, the report, and the blog. Okay? And I'm going to uh, finish passing you the score for the proposal, the minutes, the discussion forum before the end of this week. Let me help you. Let me help you. Sorry. I forgot to do this. I didn't press this.
you, you test it, you can test it. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, so how are you today? I mean, this uh, is really uh, special because the topic is like, sort of coming from next week. But I just want to share because it's kind of related to what I'm going to share next week. Uh, so I'm going to share what is the gap for, for this topic. It's some, some basic concept and some ideas and see. Uh, with how it's like in Macau and the other part of the world, something like that. It's to be more like a global citizen, right? It's important. So, my name is Hayley, and before that, I want to ask you, what is, what, do, what does it mean, EGAF, for you? Got any ideas? E-government is the use of information and communication. <laughs> 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 So if you want to give me two, okay, words that you want to emphasize, which two? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, uh, it's, it's really tricky for that. So, yeah. yeah, first of all, but yeah, it, it possibly information, right? And second of all is the system. Yes, you're right. So here are some examples. Okay, when we uh, applied for some of the driving tests, and then we got the the. the some of the proof of the, of the past uh, uh, store report. Then you go to the AST, okay, there's a, a point is. Then we go for it and we get our driving license. So it is part of a process where people can go online and simply get to this website and they will be able to get a driving license afterwards. Okay, they didn't, they didn't need to go to the, the, the place where they when they are about to apply for this. So they simply go online and they can work on it. Because they are the same. Okay. And now we are about to talk about it later. So the second example, e-bank. Okay. We basically do a lot of uh, trans transfer, or money transfer online. And now, for example, if, if my friend is asking for $10,000, if I have, I probably can do it right now. <laughs> And the other uh, example that would be application for university. So uh, I, I, I mean, most of you maybe want to go for Cambridge, <laughs> Oxford, later in the, uh, in the future, that you can simply get online and apply for it. Because it's going to need to go to the America or, or United Kingdom for, for this sort of application that would be a long way uh, from your country. And it is true. So what is the government? Basically, oh, well, well, we do it online, right? Yes. And the question is, are they the same? Okay, let's look at the, the basic <clears throat> concept of it. You have a better understanding of what it really is. Yeah.
what can we get from our government? Basically, we get protection from our government. Because, and, and more importantly, it's that government is like the head of the country. And then we got a lot of support, for example, some subsidy, allowance, and all of our healthcare services. So these are like some basic needs where human beings need. And e government here, okay, with the e as a like, prefix, e government is meaning this like system and it provides with the security and mobility. And people here, okay, with the e government service online, they do a lot of things like they're doing in real life. So we have a transactional services for them, okay, and they can switch and they can simply do something online. And which is okay, secure, and they can do it whatever they want, whenever they want. So, what is important? We look at the uh, the map here. So we see the government is in the middle, and it's actually providing a lot of uh, access to both business, uh, to the organizations, to the agencies. And we here, we we have connections between the citizens and the government. So we, we basically, for example, there were a demonstration on the streets, so the government would be, would have a, a stand and then they would do something about it. To keep this um, region, or we say country, uh, in a right stand. So we see there are a lot of, uh, like, there is a network here, and which means government is important for us. Because we are all doing something, but we have to get the permission from, uh, from the government. So the e-government actually here is doing some sort of improvement. And then they make a lot of uh, uh, things true, uh, uh, they're making things true and possible. Like the companies and organizations. We got a lot of information online, and now we can actually do it and click it. We simply can, can do it right now, it's like the money transfer. So, so actually, web technology is making life easy and possible. So, and then our group is about to talk a lot more later because we want we want to focus on this point because it's kind of important. Though. So okay, let's look at the, the chart here. So, sorry, so there's a, something. Yes. government statistics, and we see Europe is actually leading uh, and is and it ranked the first. And we're Macau, here in Macau, so we look at Asia. So we see we're kind of look like uh, the fourth, where we are ranked, ranking fourth. And then we see there's something that we can do about it, because actually e-government is a lot more important nowadays, where people uh, will be treated online easily, and they, they may not cho choose to, to go for these services online. There's an example, like the newspaper. We can still buy the old newspaper, okay, which is paper newspaper, but we can still go for online, and we can watch the news every day. But at the same time, there's an issue, because, because the, the, the newspaper online, they, they will be adding a lot of comments from, from people, so they will ask them like, okay, I don't like this, I, I think it is blah, 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 something dirty, <laughs> you see. So people will be doubted, so they will go for it. Like, oh, wait, oh, old tradition people, they will go for the old things. But here, we focus on the, the e government, which is new to us. And there's a newspaper, EU, e government. So EU is actually leading the world, we can put it that way. And then they actually, uh, during some sort of uh, there is some sort of improvement, like the live events that, which is related to us, right? That, for example, okay, we can go for finding a job online, and we look for studying, starting a business, moving, own a car, whatever. We can do a lot of things online. And then EU e government say, okay, we could be smarter, but why is it? Because it includes the security, security problems where not everyone wanted to do this. So, look at Macau. Okay, look at Macau. We're here in Macau, and what is the government doing in Macau? So we see, it's basically on the progress. It's not actually doing or, or making, making it possible yet. So we see that like uh, there are a lot of uh, projects, and citizens, relationships, these things, and here, knowledge management, 
for the electronic e-government. E -government. So we, we, we are international citizens. We're basically suffering from a lot of um, unknown, okay, unknown messages. So we have to be a global citizen and now like University of Ghana is actually promoting this idea. So Macau e government is some of a uh, in uh, university city city university. Macau City University. I just been doing this project yes. and I got this from uh, online and see the data here. And also we, we can look at uh, what do we want okay, online. And then we see there are 75.4 percent where it is uh, for mobile users. So, okay, they want to get things on to, they want to get things done online. Um, for example, uh, I I have to do uh, bill okay, for my mobile mobile phone. So, how am I going to do about it? Okay, yes, I can click online and I simply can pay online immediately. We can use the e service online. And here, the internet users, which is also important, because uh, we, we're now uh, getting the, the information age and we've got a lot of information online. So people wanted to get access to the information from around. So they wanted to focus on. The project based on the internet, so there will be a lot of uh, there will be a lot of uh, convenience, and then there will be a lot of possibilities right, in order to, for them to be global citizens. Okay, it is easy because government is the key driver of the country, and then we actually look at the e-government because it is creating the private sector, citizens and communities, and making it connected together. But the concept of the e-government, or, or let me say e-government, is basically electronic government. Since the internet has been a critical media channel, like I said, well, I, I don't trust it. So why do I have to, to do this? Because it's not reliable. And because of time and distance, people still prefer the e-government. So what is it? It's basically something that we want to focus, especially the surface. Like we want it to be convenient for everyone and we want to be secure for everyone as well. So Macau uh, is doing this project because they want it, okay, even we were kind of at the back, but we still can move forward and make it possible. So this is really important, right? Okay. <laughs> yes, and, and like, like I said, we're the, the new and future generations and possibly for, for some of the students who prefer and doing this major, they can possibly do something and make it possible. And here's the thing. This is true value of e-government as a service are delivered at the perspective of public users instead of government department functions. What is it? It's basically, okay, we, we want our citizens to be connected. At the same time, we want citizens and, um, and the, the services in the organization to be connected as well. So we want to get the information right now and which is something also right, not something uh, suspected. Suspected, yes. So, is even important? Yes. In a long term development? Yes. So, I get to sum up RRE is the, are the main features of e government. Okay, reasonable, rapid, and efficient, which are important, and e government is doing that and it's helping us and we are enjoying this service, this kind of thing. And so this is for, for, for my share today and I want it to be important because we can actually be, be careful about this because sometimes we, we look at the, we go online and we see that the HTTPS like this in green. So to be careful when you go online and see if there is a, a secure website that you're getting Sometimes you like fake and there's frank and there's a pause or something. Which is you need to be careful and you have to be careful. And thank you for your attention. So it's my sharing and thank you. Thank you for giving us a very good um, perspective for the government. Okay? So we, we love this kind of storytelling of each one of you. And we would like to give you time to share your stories. Okay, now, Ariel, are you ready? So, how do you connect this?
this there. So we have area. Good morning,
You're 12 years old. This guy's 20 years old. And you've been raped and murdered. We wouldn't want you to grow up. What would I do if anything happened to you? What would I do if anything happened to you? I won't do it. Don't you ever do this again. This next girl, her name is Jenna. She's 14 years old. We've been talking online over text message and even had a phone conversation. So right now we have the parents of Jenna. She thinks my brother is going to be driving, so she's going to get in the car, but she doesn't actually know that it's all just me. So I'm going to text her right now. Did your parents leave here? Yeah, like 15 minutes ago. You think she's going to go through this? Okay. What's your address? Right. Is, this, is this your house? Yeah. <laughs> Oh no, she flashed. 
This is the second day in the first week of learning contract number three. Okay? So if you look at the teacher's message I sent you earlier this week, on Tuesday mostly, uh, teacher's message for week number eight. Okay? So we can actually get here and look at it. I've given you some hints about the specific things you need to do as an individual member of the team and as a team as a whole. Now, first of all, these important learning contract is meant to help you develop one, two, three, four, five important skills. Okay, we call it ability to do something. Uh, you should be able to think critically on a specific topic of your choice and make sure you can understand how to put some analytical thinking into some objective materials such as the video you just saw, um, aerial points, or the traps of social media. And instead of telling you the meaning of this, two very important examples have caught our attention. And from watching this example, we definitely have a lot of to think about and we need to understand if we are going to solve such a complex real life problem, what can we do? Okay? Respect the message and in the TV programs there, for the team react, ask the teenagers to give the immediate response after watching the episodes like this and let them know this is real life. And so you need to know how to find, evaluate, and use appropriate learning resources such as the videos there. And you need to talk with the members of your team or cooperatively to make sure you, as an individual member of the team, can do with some smaller essential questions to discover, to offer your opinions as lessons learned for other people. And in the process of doing that, you're actually demonstrating you have the ability to communicate with others about something difficult to understand. We just do not give you the examples. Spoken, written. In the process of doing that, you also have to use some content knowledge, such as information security. Why is it so easy for people to get you and mine and type in information sometime is the human itself, ourselves, the weakest thing, such that the social engineering skills. And we call this learning episodes in the third learning contract the problem-based learning episodes because it's a problem which needs us to think about many different things that we need to do it together. And so I suggest to do the following things. You start working out what problem you would like to consider as the group's problem to start with. And after learning contract number one, your four proposals from one of your four from each one of the four members in your team. And of course, we did not do learning contract number two. If you have actually done this, the two pairs in both teams have produced two pair proposals all together. At the beginning of learning contract number three, you should have six possible proposals to start with. To choose one or to come up with a totally new one to adapt to the interest of your team members. And so I've also given you some ideas on how you can eliminate the possible proposals on your table until you've got one left. Uh, these are basic ideas you can follow. And then I asked you to be observant of this new style of class format in the following three bits. The first 10 minutes I'm going to do a briefing session to tell you who's going to be the speakers today, what each team is supposed to tell us. In the second 10 minutes, I'll give each team a briefing time, so each team should come up here with a reporter to tell us something about the progress of the work in your team using not more than two minutes. So if we have um, here right here, I guess we're four to five teams, so maybe two minutes very good indeed. And then you have 30 minutes to work together in your team table. And after that, we allow 20 minutes to have some update on the whole class about the individual team. And finally, in the last five minutes, I'm going to give you some feedback on the way you have been working as member of the team. So please make sure that even though you did not sign up from now on, 
each part subsequently, starting next week, each team has the responsibility to come in to do the first sharing, two to three minutes of what you have been doing, and to do what we call the intermediate sharing towards the end of the class about what your team has already accomplished. Okay? And in the second sharing, I expect that all the members of teams should come here and do your individual reporting, not just to your fellow team member, but to the whole class. So make sure you got well prepared when you come to class. Okay? You will be called to come here after the first 10 minutes on behalf of your team, typically the coordinator or the reporter is going to do that. And then go back in 30 minutes. Each team has to elaborate on works that has been that has to be done, or that has been done, and then we do we get towards the 20 more minutes for each team to share. Your team will have at least five minutes of time to tell the whole class with individual member of the team participating, and then that is really contract number three because we're working together as teams and we. We hope that with that kind of structure, I can help you really taste the, the, the ideas behind teamwork. And in order to do that, you have to set the team structures like this. Your team must have a coordinator, somewhat equivalent to a leader. Your team must have a secretary to keep track of what the team has done, has not done. And your team must have a liaison member whose job is to talk to every other member in the team to make sure everybody is aware of the obligations in the next meeting, in class meeting or in outside class meeting. And your team as an inspector, the inspector's work is to chase after each member to ensure he or she has finished during his portions of work, portions of work. And your team as a timekeeper because you have to understand that with three wins or four wins, with four or six hours per win per person, the total number of hours you can afford to get the learning contract number three done is six hours times four times four. Because you have six hours per week per person, you have four persons, so 24 hours per week, and you have four wins time, so 96 hours at most. So that is the total amount of time you can spend working on the project. And sometimes you don't need that much time. And after you have eliminated the number of hours in the class, how much time do you have? You need to have a timekeeper to remind the whole team how much resources you have in order to get the work done. It's very interesting that if, when you put your heart into this mindset, to get things done with team members, the whole team should be somehow transformed because you know the sensitivity of losing your resources. Okay, having done this, allow me to say that I'm going to give you 20 minutes now until the end of the class for you to have team meetings now. In the meantime, I'm going to take attendance, okay? So make sure you got your problem ready for the whole team for this particular last learning contract as teamwork, okay? Make sure you read the teacher's message and got the, got the message, all right? So let me take attendance now. All right. Maria, thank you. Fritz, Fritz, are you here? Fritz, Fritz, thank you. We're taking attendance call. Uh, Alexa, thank you. Roby, thank you. Annie, thank you. Uh, and then Darrow, thank you. Uh, Nicholas, thank you. Uh, Tom, Tom, are you here, Tom? Tom is not here today, right? Haley, yes. Rico, thank you. And then Kesley, thank you. Uh, Sita, thank you. Kami, thank you. Ariel, thank you. Uh, Rene, 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 thank you. Kenneth, Kenneth, thank you. Kenya, uh, thank you. Popo, thank you. Hector, thank you. Eric, thank you. Uh, Regina, thank you. So we got.
got almost all students are here. Yeah. So it's very important you spend time today to come to some consensus what problem to do in your team, all right? That's the very important step to get the job done in any contract number three, all right? Remember, next time when you come here, next Monday, we will follow the formats that I've just suggested to you in the message. And uh, you will be here recording your in-class participations, okay? Which proposal has the lowest score in the limited? 
you understand me. But this is a process which has to be carrying out this one. That will be like all the productions. Okay? You start with four proposals, okay? It's four individual proposal. You listen to the discussions of the four individual proposal. If four of these decide at least one is good enough, then you can choose that one to be the problem of learning how to free. That's it. Okay? So which one is the best? This is the process to, to, to do the voting by elimination. You never know which one comes up until you finish the voting. And each person's personal consideration is expressed using a number, three to one, to prioritize which proposals to bet. And you do not force each member to use your pattern. Everyone can use his own pattern. And you count the score. And the one with the lowest score will be halfway. And you need to do it three times. Eliminate for three out. Okay? So this is one way. Another way is if you have already decided none of the four proposals is good enough. So all of you are going to come up with a new one. So you have to come up with a new one. That from learning contract, uh, uh, not from learning contract two or three, it's from week five to week ten. You can choose a big problem from week five to week ten. Or you can use a problem which combines the number of problems that's really up to your feet. Okay? So that is, if you ask me the meaning of that, the meaning of this is to help you to eliminate the problems to be able to read the message. And then this tells you what I just told you, starting from next class, we can go to one part class and this part class. Okay? So this part means each class, each team will have two times to tell the whole class what they're doing. The first time is two to three minutes during this talk. I will give each team two to three minutes so that each team will send a reporter out there to tell the whole class what you have been doing. Okay? And then after that, I'll give 30 to 40 minutes time for each team to work on the whole. And before the end of the class, I will allow 20 minutes for each team to have five to 10 minutes to tell the whole class again what you have done. But the second sharing must be done by each member on your team. It means the whole team needs to come up. Okay? So that is, that is an important class format, starting from next year. Okay? So, and I suggest here, your team must have a team structure, such as that the following roles. Team coordinator, team scribe, team liaison member, team tracker, and type keeper. Okay? So you need to elect among yourself who is going to be the coordinator, who is going to be the secretary, who is going to be the timekeeper, who is going to be the, the tracker and uh, the ASO man. Okay? So after that, I say that you need to make sure, even though you have not done learning contract number two, you need to know, learning contract number two, expect you to know the following. You need to set goals when you do anything. You need to think about the task involved and how to accomplish the task. You need to develop a plan. You need to take away to accomplish the task. You need to time yourself and so forth. So find out. Okay? So if you want to know what this message is for, it's telling you. You need to learn how to wrap things up and these are the keys of how you can conduct discussions in class. Okay? And these are the team donations with the pairs. That's it. How do you do that? How about how? Yes. So I hope that you understand the meaning of teamwork. We specifically give you time to work in class to make sure you got involved. Okay? Uh, it's very hard to get all the team members together outside the classroom. So within the class, you have to do that. Alright? So any other question, you just need to raise your hand. And make sure you study the teacher's message on week 6 and 7 and week 8. 
and if you have any question, make sure you ask me. All right. Well, even though we do not have all the time to go through the individual links there, but let me remind you, day 10 carries a very important technique you need to know because you have to generate a digital story from your PowerPoint. So read this, how to record narrations for PowerPoint presentations. This is the basic technique you need to have. Watch that five minute video to acquire the technique. You have the PowerPoint software with you, okay? And you must have the microphone set up in your local computer, okay? So that you can test everything and you can record the narrations for your PowerPoint presentations. Once again, the report that you're going to submit contains not more than 28 pages. The PowerPoint contains not more than 20 slides. The digital story must not be longer than 15 minutes. And after you have submitted all this thing, you will be given a 30 minutes time in class per team to present your work, okay? And the materials are due the latest November the 2nd, 11.55 p.m. And your midterm exam will be on November the 5th, first day. Not in this room, I'm going to tell you which computer room to go. Okay? You need to have a record of uh, where we can enter. We, that means your team member, can enter and so to the whole class the teamwork done. So you can enter, as I said, this is the team space, okay? And you can type something in the team space of what you need to do. And then go back in the front page, you can show people that the purpose of working this wiki is to make sure that we have a record to tell people how we encompass these learning artifacts because these are the requirements. So if not accomplish this learning artifact, each member of the team must have produced his or her own journal. So we have the link of individual member. When we click into those names, we can see the individual member's journal. So this is requirement number one. The second thing is, when you click on this link, it could bring you to the discussion forum of the team records, okay? You can have two things in, it's the record like a Microsoft Word document or the real team discussion forum where we can see the team's interactions in terms of written messages. 
and you can pack the raw from each team member. So one, two, three, four, five, six individual members brought, it's brought here. So you know that my brought, although with the same topic, will not be the same brought as my team members brought. And you have to keep the team meeting minutes because we say at least three meeting minutes are required. And then you have the report, which is based on the team problem. So you click on this link, you can, you can be brought to the team report using the wiki system. And then the proposals, which is the proposals about your team problem, you have to keep it here. So what we need for the wiki is to is use it as the evidence that the whole team has worked things out step by step using the time given with the efforts of individual member and with the efforts of the peer. So this is the record, the evidence of the work. You don't just use magic to turn out a product which is an artifact to submit. You use it as an evidence the whole team's not involved to do something like this. And then when everything is done, when you do the presentations with the 30 minutes, you just bring us into your wiki. Use the wiki as the basis to do the presentation. And the wiki, you do not need to submit, but it's the basis of your presentation. Remember, after you submit all the artifacts, each team will be given 30 minutes to do the in-class presentation. And it is expected you will bring us to your wiki to show us what you do, okay? So you understand the meaning of the wiki, right? And this is very important. Now work hard, uh, I don't think it's, this is too difficult, but you have to make sure you start the work by nailing down a problem now. And I would suggest that in your team, the, the traps of the social media will be a very good problem. And in uh, Haley's team, e-government is a good problem, right? So you have to come up with a problem with your team, all right? At this point, each team must have already started building up the wiki.
For CISG 114, section 1 today, date number 16.